Or there we go. So this is recording. So I'll post the recordings every week. Um, and then uh, you'll have a quiz or some kind of an assignment uh, so I can issue you some grades over the, uh, over the course of the term, okay? Um, we'll have two tests, one midterm, one final. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm gonna get you guys on the, the software at, uh, at some point. Um, we're all gonna have a, a chance, uh, whether that's online or whether that's in person. Um, I'm gonna figure it out and you guys are gonna get in front of the software. We're gonna figure it all out together, okay? So I do appreciate your patience. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm figuring all this out as we go. Uh, so Priva software is, is what you guys are gonna learn uh, during the course of, uh, of the term in my course. Uh, we're gonna learn um, computer controls, how to navigate, how to set up Priva, uh, because that's the software that I use. Uh, has anyone used a computer control program before? No? Okay. Perfect. It's all, it's all good. So, like I said, we're going to use Priva because that's what we have here at the Greenhouse. It doesn't mean that's the, the best computer control system out there. Uh, there are quite a few of them that, that do a, a great job. And quite honestly, they all do very similar things. They all operate the, the very same way. They use sensors to communicate with the computer. Uh, the computers communicate with the, the controllers, the actuators, the motors to uh, manipulate the greenhouse environment. All of the, the programs do that. All of the, uh, this, all of the software that's out there does that in some way, uh, shape or form. Um, we have the Priva, uh, which which we're gonna use over the course of this term, but there's Argus, uh, there's Hogendorn, um, there's Hortimax, uh, Damatex. Um, there's, a, there's a whole whack of them out there. I'm missing a few, I'm sure, uh, but Priva. Okay, so knowing what you guys know, you have a background, uh, right, of, of plant science, and now we have some physics that you had last term with the, the greenhouse environment. We're gonna kind of put all that together uh, with the computer controls. So I'm gonna share my screen. There, you guys see that? You guys see Priva? Yep. Okay, cool. I'm gonna throw this over there. So today all I wanna do is um, show you general navigations. How do we, like you see this, this screen, uh, and a lot of you are very familiar with Windows, um, playing around on the internet, Explorer, using Chrome, doing whatever. Uh, Priva is, is kind of neat because it's, it uses a Windows-based software. Uh, so it's, it's very familiar to you guys. Okay, so on this screen, uh, this is our greenhouse, by the way. You see zones <clears throat> one, two, three. Uh, there's the breezeway, which is four. And um, zone five is the computer or the cucumber house. Uh, if we scroll down, the red is the, um, the classroom. Uh, and you'll see a whole bunch of numbers on this. This is, uh, this is called, uh, uh, I just lost a geo. Um, so it, it's just graphics that uh, the uh, Priva guys uh, drew up for us. Very crude, very um, very basic, but it's showing what the sensors are uh, reading in the greenhouse. So we see the weather station here on the uh, bottom left corner, um, and there's all the readings in the on the weather station. Um, so here's a map of the of the greenhouse itself, right? So you walk in. There's the doors you guys have been walking into uh, over the past term. Uh, and then you walk into the greenhouse zone one. Propagation area is over here. Cucumbers are over here. Uh, poinsettias were in this house here. So our ornamental uh, greenhouse is in zone two. The boom uh, irrigation would be here. Um, and then zone three, we got tomatoes, strawberries, and a whole bunch of mishmash stuff um, on, the, on the left hand side here. Uh, so south is uh, over here where my, my mouse is wiggling around 
and then north of the greenhouse is over here, uh, just in west and east, just to give you guys some reference points when I when I talk about zone one through five. Um, navigating the software. So before I start, before I get too too involved in this, if you guys have any questions, you can unmute your mic and uh, and interrupt me at any time if you want, uh, or you can raise your hands. I'll see that down here in the uh, somewhere down here on the on the bar, um, or chat or type it in the chat, um, which I will figure out where the hell that is. Participants, I don't know, I'll figure that out after. But if you guys have any questions, please let hey, me know. Matt, yeah, is this real time for today? Pardon me. Like, All the information in this. Okay. Yes. Okay, so it's connected to the real greenhouse. It's not just an example for us. Yep, you got it. I am on the software uh, as we speak. I'm in my office, um, and yeah, I'm looking directly into the to our greenhouse right now. So, good question. Yep. yep. So these are all the the readings in our zones. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk about how to navigate this software. Um, so just like any other um, Windows-based program, we have a, a title bar, which is on top here. It says Priva Office Direct Client. Uh, I'm the client, and here is the server. Um, so Priva operates in a way that you have to have a central server to collect all the information. Uh, and from there, you can have multiple computers that will control the software. So if you have different growers or, or management that uh, have computers in their office and they want to look into it, you can you can do that, but you have to have one central server. That central server is is connected to the um, um, the motherboard that's in the, the, the breezeway, which is in here. Um, and that's the the cabinets that we open up and, and hear the clicking and <coughs> look at all the, 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 the controls, the switches and stuff. Uh, that is the actual computer. Uh, the server is what allows us to look at the, the settings and change the settings. Okay, so that's the title. Uh, that's, the, that's the title bar. It uh, gives us that information. Uh, menu bar is right here. So uh, we have, a, a, again, um, just like a Word document, you have file uh, and you have a whole bunch of different options in here, um, which we can change some settings that we have. Um, how we view the, 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 the screens and um, there's there's other actions within the, the browser, um, et cetera. We'll go over that uh, as we go through the program. Um, under there, we have uh, another toolbar. Okay, so here we have uh, more options. So a keypad, uh, if you don't like using your keyboard, uh, you can, use this keypad that they have um, full screen, you know, there's, there's different options here. So this, this box here, this window here allows you to type in uh, kind of like an address for, for a page. Okay, so if we look at, um, uh, let's look at some, there we go. So here's the title of the page, you'll see M2 and then one in the uh, the other box there. So M usually indicates it's a, uh, a measurement page. So you're looking at uh, some kind of, you're looking at the sensors, you're looking at what the sensors are reading, okay? Uh, and two is the number. So it's kind of like a, an address for that, for that specific page. Um, if there was an I here, so if I type in like I120, that'll give me, um, I believe it's a uh, vent uh, settings or no, maybe not do this, temperature settings, there you go. So I is uh, indicates a setting and then the nine indicates the address. The one right there indicates the zone that we're in. The zone that we're in is, is here in the right-hand column as well, or right-hand side as well, okay? So we have one through five uh, and then six is uh, a zone that you guys play with. It. Uh, it's kind of a quote unquote dummy zone, uh, which doesn't control anything. Uh, kind of a sandbox for you guys to play in. 
Uh, moving down, we have uh, like a back arrow and a forward forward arrow, just like on a web web page. Um, this is handy if you're looking at like the weather, for instance, and you're in the settings page. You're setting up temperatures or time, uh, and you want to know. Uh, I don't feel like going through the, the process. It's just a quick way to get back to uh, to a window you were just at, uh, at. Okay, so forward and back there. Uh, and then we have a bunch of advanced tools here that we'll get into at a, another time. Okay, so uh, prints, we have um, shortcut pages, um, graph settings, and custom uh, design for your pages. We'll get into that down the road. Now the meat and potatoes of, of the program is, is down here on the navigation bar. Okay. This is how you're going to navigate through the, the program. Some growers use these windows. They memorize the, the letters and the numbers. Uh, good for you if you can. Um, I don't, but that's, a, that's user preference. Okay. Um, but these are just a, a shortcut way to, to get to the specific pages. The navigation bar is, is where you're going to get around the program. Okay. So, um, opening up or hovering over these uh, icons will give you other options. Uh, opening up menus, and from here, they'll, they'll, uh, these menus will take you to specific settings or, or measurement pages. Um, an arrow beside indicates there's more options. Okay, uh, so the general tab will give you uh, like this is where you're going to set up. Um, where you're, you're located um, in the world, that, that's important, right? Latitude, longitude, um, that indicates, um, you know, how uh, sun, sunrise and sunset affects um, growing. You can set your date and time over uh, in the general tab. Uh, you can have a look at your, your active alarms, your alarm histories, um, messages from other growers, all sorts of fun learning from home, eh? <laughs> Cats going across your computer. I love it. Um, and you can set up user roles and um, uh, what these users can see. Okay, so if you're a grower, if you're a manager of a greenhouse and you have section growers underneath you, you can set up uh, pages for them to specifically see. Um, you can set up zones for them to control. Um, you know, if they, if I had a grower that, that was only in the propagation house and, and I wanted them to, uh, to control the, uh, the environment, I can have that, I can give them access to control zone one and then block out the rest of the, the zones. Uh, that's handy for, uh, for section growers. It's also handy for growers to, um, um, to show managers, um, know their the, the settings and the they, the managers always want to have kind of some kind of hand into uh, how the crop is grown and, and managed but the growers don't want the managers to mess around with the settings so with that respect we give them um, kind of visual read-only access right so you can see but you can't change you can't touch uh, it's just a good way to control um, what people can and cannot do uh, so we do that over user roles had we been in class, we'll go over this. Um, I would have you guys set up your own usernames and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we'll get to that when I see you in person or, or talk to you one-on-one. -on -one through Zoom. Okay. Um, other things in the general tab, we're, we're gonna look at uh, configuration, um, configuration of the software itself, right? So we'll look, look at system settings, uh, we'll look at uh, time synchronization. Uh, we'll look at uh, reporting settings, right? So if we want to uh, have a scheduled printout of, uh, of graphs uh, or of, uh, of specific zone uh, climates, we would do that. We can set that up through here in the general tab. So that's the, the general tab. Um, weather, this is what, uh, our, our, this is what's going on on our weather station. Okay. So currently right now, here are all the settings on our, or the, sorry, measurements on our, uh, weather station. Uh, this is currently what's going on. 
real time. Um, another thing you'll notice with the previous software, uh, so you're gonna, it, everything is, it shows up like a, like a spreadsheet, like a, a table. Um, what does this stuff mean, right? In that question? Yes, please. That uh, undelayed light intensity, what is that measured in, PPF? Uh, this is outside, so it is going to be watts per meter squared. Okay, I see. Thank you. Yeah, no, please continue asking. Um, typically, on a weather station, you're going to have, um, you want to know the energy, the full energy coming into the greenhouse, right? So it's going to be a, a global sensor or a pyram, pyram meter, pyram meter. <laughs> uh, I can say it, no problem when no one's looking at me. Um, but that's going to give you total energy coming into the greenhouse. Uh, if you measure light in the greenhouse, you want PAR, right? You want to know what the, the plant is, is receiving. Uh, PPAF is, is kind of like um, measuring volume in a, of water in a bucket, right? So you, that's, that's calculating the amount of photons that hit a specific spot. Just a, a simple uh, little comparison there. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so yeah, in this table, um, you're going to see numbers along the side. Those numbers really are just indicating what these titles are. Okay, so you're seeing measured outside temperature and then a slash calculated frost temperature. Okay, uh, then you'll see um, different readings in, in, in these uh, fields. Uh, so the measured outside temperature is 1.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, so for the first title, you're going to see the first number. Uh, it corresponds with the first number. Uh, the second title, calculated frost temperature, uh, is going to correspond with the second um, title. So if you go down here where there's three of them, uh, light accumulation is, uh, is 115 watts per meter squared, and then so on and so forth. 24 hours is this, and then today is, is that. Uh, that's going to happen all throughout the, uh, the software, so kind of understanding what you're looking at is kind of important, right? Um, so the numbers themselves, you'll see they're kind of faded out, kind of bluish gray. Um, that means that you're looking at a measurement. If I were to have a look at the settings, you'll see they're kind of bolded in black, okay? Uh, so now I'm going to go back to where I was using the back arrow. Um, so yeah, so settings or measurements are, are kind of a faded uh, grayish and then um, settings are, are bolded black. <clears throat> uh, if you hover over any of these readings, it'll give you the units that we use and the range of the sensor. Okay, so 1.2 degrees is in Celsius. <clears throat> Um, so the range gives you what the, the sensor could actually see. So in this case, <clears throat> this is wind direction, right? So that's that thing that's uh, looks either like a, a rooster on top of a barn, you know, those, those, those types of uh, sensors. Uh, we have one of those, it's not a rooster, but it's, uh, it's a kind of a yellow flag that moves in the direction of the wind. <clears throat> um, wind speed measured in um, meters per second or miles per hour. I, I, I got to check that. I'm going to check that out. That doesn't make any sense to me. We're in Canada. <clears throat> uh, but I'll double check that, what that uh, reading is. Um, weather alarms. So if we were to have, you know, like high wind or, or um, freezing cold weather, my alarms would go off. I've got them all silent right now uh, because I don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night. Um, different options um, for, for, for different alarms. So if, <clears throat> if you want to be called, uh, you know, there's alarm one, for instance, uh, if you, if you want to be called for any alarm. Uh, if you want to uh, just hear the alarm, you can have different settings in here as well. <clears throat> uh, all these alarms will pop up on the screen. And you'll see that with um, 
that red dot. So these are previous alarms. <clears throat> uh, so I had one of two alarms here and I'll usually check those out. That's the first thing that pops up when I open the screen. <clears throat> okay, so the weather, um, you can have weather reports um, throughout the day or, or previous days. This is handy for um, assessing what's, what's going on with the crop, what has happened with the crop, uh, and kind of predicting the future. Um, there's also programs in the more advanced versions of, uh, of Priva, uh, Priva Connect, um, Priva Office Direct that will, will actually give you um, predictions based on the, the weather in your surrounding area. So it'll, it'll connect to the internet, <clears throat> it'll forecast for you. Um, we don't have that version, um, but there, there is that software out there. Um, and other computer programs do the same thing. <clears throat> so they use, um, like I said, the, the internet um, forecasts through um, like the weather network or whatever you want to subscribe to. Uh, they compare that to our weather station that's on top of the greenhouse uh, and they give uh, recommendations to settings and, and such. Okay, so that's the weather. If we go down the list here, another icon is the, the climate. Um, this is where all of your settings are going to be. Uh, this is where you're going to manipulate your, your individual uh, climate zones. Um, so if you look at climate, look at settings or status first. So in zone one, this is, this is what's happening currently right now in, uh, in zone one, okay? So you'll see your, your, your measurements from your sensors. Um, so this first box, those sensors are from that, uh, that bird box. Uh, I have a video online. I don't know if you guys have seen it, uh, but that box that's hanging in the each zone, uh, it has a uh, wet bulb and dry bulb temperature sensor. And from there, you can get a whole bunch of different readings. Uh, it also has your, um, your plant leaf temperature as well uh, that's dangling outside of it. Uh, so you get your measured air temperature uh, through your, your dry bulb temperature se uh, sensor that's in, in the box. Uh, and you get your measured relative humidity um, by comparing the evaporative cooling from the wet bulb um, and comparing that to the dry bulb temperature. Uh, there's something called psychrometric graphs. I'm gonna get into that uh, maybe next week or the week after, uh, how all of these are calculated on, on just two sensors. Um, so that psychrometric graph or the Molier diagram um, will tell you uh, specifically what's going on in the, in the air uh, compared to the temperature and the, the amount of moisture that's in the air. Okay, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds with that, but it gives you uh, absolute humidity, which is um, the direct measurement of water that's actually in the air, right? So it's 12.4 milligrams um, per meter square of, uh, of water that's in the air. The humidity deficit, uh, so that's how much moisture can fit into the air uh, at a given temperature, right? So the air can hold a specific amount of, uh, of moisture at any given time um, within a given temperature. Okay? Think of it as a, as a glass. Um, the warmer the, the air, the, the bigger the glass, um, and the amount of water is, uh, is going to be absolute or given, okay? So if we have, you know, I said, I don't want to get too deep into the weeds, but if we had a, a one liter glass and if we had 10 mil or 100 milliliters of, of water in that glass, uh, that's, that would be the absolute humidity, so to speak, in that glass. The deficit would be 900 mils. Okay, that's how much more water we can fit in that glass. Uh, moving down to the dew point, the dew point will, uh, will show at what temperature the water will condense out of the air, right? So whether that's uh, in the form of cloud in the sky, 
which is water just accumulating on dust really, uh, or a leaf, uh, or the temperature of the glass where it condenses. Uh, moving across, right? So the dew point is 13.9. Is the wet bulb temperature would be 17.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's measuring the evaporative cooling in the greenhouse. Uh, that's the, um, the temperature sensor that has that uh, wet shoelace on it. Okay, the measured leaf temperature is the uh, temperature sensor that's dangling outside of the, 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 um, the bird box. Uh, and that's painted green. Uh, so that's measuring the amount of energy from the sun, right? It's going to be a little warmer always than the, the general air temperature. Having these two temperatures will allow us to, to calculate the vapor pressure uh, of the air and the vapor pressure of the leaf, which gives you guys, and I'm sure you've, uh, you've all seen YouTube videos on VPD or vapor pressure deficit the end all be all of, of, of growing to, to some growers. Uh, but I, it, it's, <laughs> as Graham says, uh, but I, it's just another measurement that we use to, um, to our advantage, another tool in the toolbox as a grower. Um, and then beside that's accumulation of the VPD over, over a period of time. Um, moving down, these boxes are, are measuring temperature over time, um, okay? So it's just taking an average um, over the, the, the calculated periods. So we'll get into periods next week. Um, what does that mean? Setting time periods, all that stuff. Um, the calculated heating temperature is what the, uh, the grower sets and the measured heating temperature is what it actually is. So you're gonna see that all throughout the computer or the Priva program calculated versus versus measured. Um, okay, so calculated is what the computer thinks it should be based on the grower settings. Uh, and the measurement is what it actually is. Okay, so if I have my temperature settings for 18, uh, that's what the, the calculation is at this point in time. Um, but this is going to change based on what the actual temperature is. Okay. Um, if this is way out of the range, uh, then our, our calculated heat temperature might go up or down based on the computer. You all with me so far? Thumbs up. All right. Again, this is a lot of information and I understand and I take it for granted, uh, right? I, I know what all this stuff is. So if I'm moving too fast, just, just tell me. Um, we're gonna go through all of this stuff again. We're gonna kind of spiral through this, this software Right, so I'm gonna show you something uh, and then we're gonna circle back to it, I guarantee you at some point, okay? Uh, today, I just wanna give you guys general information on, on how to navigate the software and, and basically um, what you're looking at when you're looking into the software. Um, there's a few things over here to the side before I, I get down too far. Um, you know, you look at the, the temperature adjust uh, and the climate equipment, that's just scrolling through these tabs up top, which I haven't really talked about yet. Uh, so you have your navigation icons on the side. And once you open up any of these menu items, you're gonna see tabs across the top. Okay, just like if you were to open up a whole whack of, uh, uh, of internet pages, um, you can navigate through those menu options uh, through these tabs, okay? So just different, different parts of that menu. Uh, and then the arrow forward and back will give you um, options to navigate these tabs uh, just a different way. Uh, over to the right here, <clears throat> you'll see zones. This is important when you're, you're making your settings. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> uh, make sure you're on the right zone. Okay, <clears throat> if you want to change the zone, the, the settings in zone one, make sure you're in zone one, right? Don't, uh, don't do zone two because that uh, won't be good. Uh, so make sure you have the correct zone all the time. And doing so is right here. <clears throat> if you notice up top um, in that, uh, that title box or these two windows here, when I move zones, that number changes with the zones. So 
but you can do the same thing here, right? So if I were to type one in that box, it'll go back to zone one. And so just different ways to navigate the program. Uh, going down the, uh, the items here, uh, we're looking at, uh, again, more settings. Uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, controlling your humidity. So purge, uh, purge is uh, a way to, to, to get rid of your humidity in the greenhouse. Uh, again, we look at calculated versus measured. <clears throat> um, so my calculated dehumidifying sense, uh, set, uh, setting is 90%. And right now it's only 50% in the greenhouse. So what are we doing? We're not purging, right? So it says off. Uh, calculated soil temperature, we have, uh, again, more temperature sensors in the, in the greenhouse looking at <clears throat> in zone one, sorry guys, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm gonna mute myself for a second. Too much cream in my coffee, I guess. Um, the propagation area is, uh, we, cal we wanna know soil temperature. Okay, so I have temperature sen uh, sensors all throughout the, uh, the propagation area uh, that calculates the soil temperature, okay? So that gives me readings. Um, of what it actually is, and it tells me what my set points are. Okay, so that's your climate status. Uh, alarm levels, <clears throat> that allows me to set alarms throughout the, the zones. Uh, reports, uh, gives me daily readouts if I want them. Settings is where you're, you're gonna kind of live. So you're gonna live between status and, and settings. <clears throat> and this is where you can, you're, you're gonna control your, your, your um, your greenhouse climate or environment. So you have your temperature, you have your humidity, time, <clears throat> your heating, uh, mixing valve, vents, your cool stage settings, your curtain settings, uh, carbon dioxide, <clears throat> horizontal airflow, your fans, uh, your lighting settings, uh, your, in, you have custom settings and then graphs. Uh, graphs are, are a great tool. <clears throat> uh, so your temperature settings, um, you're going to set through your time periods. Um, and again, we're going to get through that. We're going to get to specific settings uh, as we go through the, the program, okay? Um, <clears throat> so temperature settings are going to be based on a lot of different influences uh, that you have in the greenhouse, right? Okay. Uh, the biggest influence being the sun. Uh, if we have a, a bright sunny day out, you know your temperature is going to increase in the uh, in the, the greenhouse with solar gain, right? We're going to accumulate a lot of uh, solar energy, and the, the heat is going to um, accumulate in the greenhouse. So we can we can adjust our temperature based on sunlight and a whole bunch of different other things. Um, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds with, with specifics, but uh, we, had, we set our temperature. This is our temperature we want <clears throat> in the greenhouse. This is so we want it at least 18. Uh, so we're going to heat the greenhouse if it drops below 18 degrees. Uh, and then the vents or whatever cooling air conditioning we have is going to kick on uh, once the temperature rises above 24. Okay, so that's very simple, very clean, very um, basic. There's other influences on the, on the greenhouse, like wind, how cold it is outside, the sunlight levels, uh, is it cloudy? You know, all that kind of stuff influences the, uh, <clears throat> the energy coming into the greenhouse, uh, which all will affect the temperature. So that's what all of these boxes are for. We can adjust the temperature based on sunlight. And all of this is accumulative, okay? Uh, so we can um, uh, mitigate the amount of adjustment we have in these boxes. We'll circle back to that. Okay, so maybe not make sense to you at this point in time, but we're gonna circle back to all of this. Uh, humidity settings, right? So, um, 
how humid you want your greenhouse, when do you want to dry it, when do, at which point do you want to dry your greenhouse, and at which point do you want to add uh, mist to your greenhouse. That's where this, that's what this controls here. Your time periods, you can have up to four different time periods a day. Uh, you can split your 24 hours up into, into four different segments. Uh, this is where if you wanted to have uh, a dip uh, in your, uh, your greenhouse environment, uh, you can add that here. Uh, you know, your, your daytime temperature would be <clears throat> lower than your, your nighttime temperature or whatever you want. So this is, this is where you would set that up. Heating settings. So if you have specific heating uh, in, the, in each zone, like soil heat, uh, you'll have to have a different mixing valve in, the, um, in that section zone. Uh, your general heat comes from your boilers or from uh, uh, whatever type of heat you might have, uh, but your heating in your in your zone comes from specific um, pieces of equipment that you might have in that zone. Uh, for instance, <clears throat> our propagation area has underbench heating, so we have more uh, mixing valves that would control that specific heating. That's what this is. The mixing valve would control the, um, the general heating in that zone. Yeah, your vent settings. <clears throat> um, so this is where you would configure your, your, your vent settings based on the type of vents that you have uh, and your orientation of the greenhouse. Cool stages, uh, cooling stages. You'll see I have nothing here uh, because I don't have any cooling equipment. Cooling equipment would be uh, something like a fan and pad system or end wall vents, <clears throat> air conditioning, uh, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, the, the only cooling that I have in the greenhouse is venting. Um, so the cooling stages would be, so if I had like 10 fans on the back of the greenhouse, you've all seen those, those large cooling fans at the end or the vent fans at the end of uh, greenhouses. <clears throat> we can control the stage at which they turn on. That's where this is. So cooling stages would, uh, would turn two of them on, four of them on, uh, all of them on at the same time, uh, depending on the percentage of cooling you need. Curtains. Um, so this is your, your shade curtains, your energy curtains or your screens. Uh, these would be overhead or sidewall curtains. Um, this is where you control that. So you'll notice I only have one curtain in zone one. Uh, that's an energy curtain. But if I move to zone two, <clears throat> where you know we have that blackout curtain, there's two options there. Uh, again, you can have three and four, uh, depending on the type of curtains you guys have in your greenhouses, right? <clears throat> Some greenhouses have two energy curtains overlapping, so you can have some airflow between, um, and then a blackout curtain on top of it, so you can have more options. Carbon dioxide settings. Again, you'll see our greenhouse is blank here because I don't, I don't know if you know this or not, but we don't have any influence of carbon dioxide in the greenhouse. Uh, so if we had dosing, whether it be liquid or coming off of our boiler, this is where the settings would be. <clears throat> and basically it would be, um, that's what it would look like. So start times, um, what levels you want, uh, et cetera. Dead band you're gonna see <clears throat> in, uh, in any type of computer controls. Uh, what a dead band is, is uh, uh, basically difference between um, the lowest setting you want and the highest setting you want, right? So you want that, uh, that sweet spot. So uh, for instance, you look back at the temperature, uh, our, our heating temperature is 17, our cooling is 19. The dead band would be two degrees. So you'd have that same thing with your carbon dioxide. Horizontal airflow um, is based off of your humidity, um, your lighting. Basically, is it on or off? Uh, is it sunny outside? Uh, and then your custom settings. 
Um, there's a whole whack of different things you can do here. Okay, we're, we'll circle back to that. Moving down the list, energy is where you would see um, where to control your boilers. Uh, so your zone is important here. You have one, <clears throat> generally one heating zone. <clears throat> and in our case, it's zone four. Uh, the breezeway is where the, uh, the mixing valves are. We control the heating in zone four. Um, <clears throat> so this is what our boilers are doing currently right now. Right? They're set to 94 degrees Celsius and the, the measured heat supply is 90. Uh, and we'll move down the list there once uh, we go over that specifically. Um, this is a table of, uh, of equipment usage. Um, basically a, a report readout of, uh, of when the boilers were used. Uh, settings, this is where you set your boiler up. So again, you'll notice the um, bolded readings. Uh, those bolded readings are measurements. So we can, we can change those at any point in time, okay? Um, Priva is somewhat intuitive. You see, we saw that window pop up. So if I type in something that's absolutely ludicrous, uh, it, it'll tell you, you know, that value is outside the limits. Okay. So this is all, um, boiler settings. Sorry, boiler question? Yes, Macy. Um, not until I was distracted, I was gonna ask. I'll come back to it. I had two questions that I'm distracted. I'll ask again, sorry. <laughs> no, please interrupt <laughs> anytime. Uh, sometimes I wonder, right? So I can see some of your videos, but others- Oh, no, I would, now I know. I was gonna ask you how it gave you the warning that you were doing something that it didn't like. Yep. Is that based on a general intuition or based on what the settings are put in by the controller? Uh, so this is uh, software, so this is programming. Uh, it tells you that there's, um, so this would be specifically um, 94 degrees Celsius, that would be the maximum temperature. There's no way that you're going to have 666 degrees. So that's that's within the, the software of the, uh, of the computer itself. Um, it's out of range, right? And if it was something that wasn't such a high range, we would still detect that because of the program system and not your controlled. Um, yeah, yes. So am I making sense? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think I, well, let me, let me explain a little more. So if I were to put something in here that would, wouldn't make sense, but it's within the range, it wouldn't tell me that, right? It wouldn't okay, tell okay. me that you're being an idiot. No, you can't have, so this is 90, this is okay. So this is uh, period max. So that means Specifically, this is the maximum temperature of the boiler um, that it'll get to during this, this time period. 94 degrees, I don't want it much hotter than that. <clears throat> if uh, this is a water boiler, so what happens to uh, a water boiler uh, once the water boils inside that boiler? Does anyone know? <clears throat> what happens to a kettle? The boil evaporates? You get steam, pressure. You got it. Yeah, steam um, and water vapor. Water vapor, just like vapor pressure, uh, exudes pressure on the environment, right? So if we were to boil that water within the boiler, it would create steam. Uh, and within that steam would be pressure. We'd have lots of pressure build up within that boiler. And if we have too much pressure in that boiler, guess what would happen? Big bang, bang, kaboom, that boiler would blow up. Uh, I can make that happen. <laughs> Uh, by allowing that uh, that boiler to reach boiling points. Um, the computer will let me. It won't stop me from doing that. But it won't let me put in 666 degrees because it's way out of range. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. thank you. All right. Sorry, Corey, what? The boiler itself will have safeties on it. Though, yes, right? 100%. It does have a safety valve on it, so that won't happen. Why does it have a safety valve on it? because it did happen, right? It has happened. Um, 
but yeah, so this is the, the boil, these are the boiler settings and you know their settings page because it's, if you look up here, it has that I in front of it. So it's an I-21, you know, that's a, a settings page, but also because of the bolded black uh, lettering or numbering. Uh, moving down the list, all of this is uh, boiler settings, okay? Overrides, uh, overrides are always handy. You'll see them in climate as well. Uh, you'll see climate overrides. Uh, this is how you kind of this is how you configure your equipment. Uh, this is also how you figure out if your equipment is working or not, right? So, say my my vent motor, um, for instance, uh, stopped. My vent is open for some reason, and it shouldn't be open. Uh, I might co come to this page and I might turn off or or close my vents. Um, this is a way to troubleshoot. So if I go back to the zone that the, the, the vent should be closed and I look, it's not closing. I know there's something wrong with the, either the communication to the vent motor or the vent motor itself. So you can do a little bit of process of information using overrides. <clears throat> uh, moving down the list here, your irrigation settings. Okay, this is where all this resides. Uh, so your water supply, your settings, um, et cetera. Uh, irrigation time is usually set, uh, irrigation is usually set based off of time and uh, light <clears throat> and temperature. Uh, again, overrides and configuration uh, of your sensors or your, uh, your valves how much water comes into your greenhouse, et cetera, would be all be in here. Uh, overview, um, I have a couple custom pages here that I've created, but an overview tab gives you insight of all the zones at the same time. Uh, again, you're looking at kind of a muted light gray. So you know these are all settings, or, or sorry, uh, measurements of sensors. <clears throat> The compartment that you're looking at is the uh, second column here. Are there any alarms going off in any of these? <clears throat> so this is a good page to start off first thing in the morning. Uh, you're looking at a general overview. Um, so alarms, overrides, do you have any overrides in this, in this um, zone? Uh, you know, uh, are the lights overridden? Are the events overridden? It'll tell you yes. Um, Usually something like, uh, so if I see yes here and I see my measured greenhouse temperature as being either way too high or way too low, I'll think, oh shit, I left the vent <clears throat> open or closed, right? So during the winter, I, I cracked the vent because it was sunny, uh, for instance, and I see my measurement, my temperature drop way below measured. Usually you'll see uh, an alarm go off. Uh, I'll come here and I'll see an override and it says yes, then I'll go back to the Age, I'll remove the override. Uh, so this is a, my point is this is a good page to kind of see what's generally going on in the, uh, the computer zones. Uh, measured temperature, this is your air temperature, right? Uh, this is what your calculated heating and cooling is. Uh, relative humidity, heating percentages and cooling percentages. Um, This is water temperature, um, but I don't have sensors for that. So anyway, uh, and this is the amount of sunlight coming into the greenhouse. I only have the um, uh, the sensors on uh, this, the light sensors on top of the weather station, so all the readings will be in uh, watts per meter squared. Um, this one here is different because it's a different sensor reading. Uh, I have a, a global sensor or a pyranometer, uh, or, and I have a linear sensor as well on in, it's reading to zone six. Uh, so linear sensors measure what your eye sees, basically. It's kind of like a, it's good for pictures or, or video or film, uh, measures lumens. Lumens are for humans, right? Uh, and then the watts per meter squares tell you uh, what the energy is coming in. 
And this last column here tells you if you have a temperature adjustment or not. We'll, circ we'll circle back to all of that, okay? Uh, this is a way to quickly acknowledge all the alarms, um, turn off that loud buzzing. Graphs, growers best friends are graphs. Uh, this tells you what has happened in the, uh, this gives you all historical value of the sensors over the past, however long it's been measuring. Uh, in this case, it'll go back years. We're gonna spend a lot of time on graphs. We're gonna do some assignments with graphs. Um, we'll troubleshoot uh, some crops. Uh, I'll give you a whole bunch of different uh, scenarios and we'll uh, Fuck. figure a few things out with graphs. Fuck me. Fucking miss this complicated shit. Fuck. Sebastian, mute. <laughs> I know it's frustrating, eh? Damn. Oh boy. Uh, yes, it is complicated. If you're talking about this. Um, just to complicate things a little more. Uh, more advanced programs within Priva, you, you can even set your parameters using graphs. Uh, specifically, I cannot um, with, with the software that I have. Uh, but you can in, uh, in more advanced um, installs of Priva, you can actually uh, set your, your parameters uh, within your environment using graphs. Uh, you can manipulate these uh, lines moving up and down, uh, et cetera. Uh, I don't have that fancy of a, of a program. Uh, in a lot of greenhouses, this is what you'll see. Veggie greenhouses would have uh, a more advanced version of, uh, of Priva, they would use something like Connects, uh, which gives you more options <clears throat> to control the, the uh, environment. A lot of uh, ornamental growers will have um, old systems like this one here, which is a maximizer system, um, which is just fine for what we have. Uh, moving forward into uh, years coming, we are looking at uh, tearing down this greenhouse and rebuilding. Um, talk about stress, that's, uh, that's what's on our docket. Uh, that could happen as early as this spring and we will be getting new, uh, new software with that. Doesn't help you guys much today, uh, but I do wanna say um, that we're always a reference, right? Uh, the college here is always a reference, Derek, myself, uh, Sebastian, whomever you feel comfortable talking to, uh, whatever point in, in life you were at, always shoot back to us. Come back and ask us questions. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Matt. Yes. Uh, I wonder, as a user of Prever, do they provide any user manual for us to uh, like adjust the temperature or the climate of the greenhouse? in certain song or with certain products, do they have that kind of manual that we can use that as a reference? Yep. Yep. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that or not. Did I share that? So I won't do that right now. So if you, you click on this little question mark here, that is the user manual of, uh, of Priva, 100%. Uh, and if you're within um, anywhere in Ontario, you can use uh, um, tech. Plant Tech, uh, if you ever drive down the QEW and you look west, um, you'll see Priva. They have an office, uh, North St. Catharines, uh, Vineland area. Uh, right beside Priva is a, a company called Plant Tech. Either one of those companies will, will give you support as well. There's always technicians uh, on site. Just give them a call and say, hey, um, it could be a sensor that's out. Right, and you don't know that right away. You'll need a technician to help you out. Um, in no way, shape, or form will you guys be uh, a master at everything. Uh, so don't expect yourself to be that. Right, you should have some basic understanding of uh, of the equipment. Uh, that's why we give it to you. Right, we we uh, we give you that in uh, in greenhouse. 
is that technical. Um, you'll get a basic overview of all of the equipment, right? Uh, if you want to be an expert in the environment, you know, uh, be an expert in the environment. Doesn't mean that you have to be a boiler maker too, right? Uh, there's always people out there that, uh, that can help you. And having a good list of, of contacts, uh, a little black book, right? Or your, your cell phone, keep those contacts handy. Um, I would suggest to, to have an electrician on, on uh, in your contacts, have a boiler maker in your contacts, um, have a greenhouse builder, you know, always have somebody at your fingertips that you can not only bounce ideas off of, troubleshoot problems. Uh, these are things that you, you that you're not going to do everything by yourself, right? You should have uh, a, a good collection of people that you can trust to, to ask questions to. Uh, and I hope that you can feel that you can ask us, uh, so Derek, myself, Sebastian, Bill, whomever you feel comfortable with, uh, keep us in, in your contacts down the road. We've helped many growers, um, they're growers now, they're not students anymore, but former students uh, in their roles. So please don't feel shy. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll do a bunch of different things within graphs uh, and then your custom pages. Uh, I'll show you how to make a custom page. We'll go over custom settings and all that fun stuff as well. Um, any questions on how to navigate that I, I think I've covered pretty much all of the navigation uh, and everything that you're going to see within the windows. Uh, we'll circle back to all of those items that I touched on. Um, again, there's a lot of information that's going to come to you within this class. I don't expect you to learn uh, or, or you're not going to be tested on every little specific thing. Um, but things that I, I circle back to, things that are very basic that you should have an understanding, uh, I, I will test you on, I'll quiz you on, right? Like, make sure you're in the right zone when you're changing settings, right? Um, how do you determine between a, uh, a settings page and a, uh, a status page? Uh, you know, things like that. How can I maneuver uh, or navigate through the, um, the software? Well, those are things that I'll probably ask you On a quiz coming up, right? Uh, will there be a recording? Uh, will there be a recording for a Zoom call as well? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. Um, so it looks like I was able to go over 40 minutes on the Zoom. Great. Maybe it's because of the pandemic. Maybe it's because of the lockdown. I don't know. Um, but uh, I think I'll use this platform again next week. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about uh, a little more in depth on time periods, uh, looking at graphs, looking at alarms, how we uh, turn them off, set them up, all that stuff. So for this class, it won't be a live class anymore? Like it, it will only be on Zoom? Uh, no, next week we'll have a Zoom meeting as well. Okay. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Good. Um, Honestly, it's, it's easier for me, it's easier for you. Uh, I've made recordings, I will record, uh, make more, more recordings. It is awkward. So I do apologize when I, when I make the recordings, I, I, I'm sure I sound like an idiot and I don't try to sound like an idiot, but it comes across that way um, because I'm talking to myself. <laughs> so at least here I can see your faces. Uh, so I appreciate those who, who are on video and uh, will speak up, so. Uh, Use this as a classroom, whether it's virtual or not, okay? Um, we all do better uh, when we're shooting back and forth and, and conversing rather than me just barking at you. And as you can see, my voice is uh, lagging. So less cream in my coffee, I think, for the future. <laughs> Maybe it's the uh, Baileys. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, if there's no questions, uh, be on the lookout for uh, your, your quiz uh, coming up. Uh, did I have that? Still sharing this or not? I missed a quiz last week. Can I see who submitted it online? Okay, I'll reopen it. I'll reopen oh. it. I want to put a due date on things because that puts, that puts them in your calendar. 
uh, and I don't know, uh, I'm not uh, too familiar with it, but does that, um, am I still sharing my screen? Yeah. Okay. You can see the blackboard? No. No? No. There it is. There it is. Um, so that puts things up in your calendar. I don't know if it gives you uh, pop-ups or reminders. I'm not sure if that's if you have those settings up. Um, but the due dates, that's why I put them there, okay? It's not just to, to piss you off or, or me to be a dick, but uh, I want them to be uh, there just to keep them as a reminder for you. Shoot me an email if you miss it, and I'll just I'll repost it. Um, I want to give you guys the, the, the most benefit, but try and, try and stay on top of it. Uh, and you'll see all the quizzes and, and all the assessments that I'll put for you, uh, that I'll have for you, will be put in this uh, test and quizzes. Okay, so any assessments, any tests, any quizzes will be in this uh, folder. Uh, and I'll keep them by unit. I'm organizing by unit and not by week. Um, it could be that some weeks will take, or some units will take two weeks. Maybe, we'll see. Okay? Uh, so I will read. Um, quick yep. question. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, so... If we were, were here for the meeting today and we watch, or we, we were here for the meeting today and we like look at the PowerPoint that you posted, what should we be prepared for the unit two quiz? Like, is there any other type of references that we should be kind of looking at or we is it pretty basic? Yeah, no, every, all the information will be based off of what I've talked about or in the PowerPoint okay. or videos that I posted. Okay. Um, I have posted a couple books um, mm -hmm. and that's just for your reference. I don't expect you to study from them, okay? I don't expect you to, I'm not, I'm not gonna say read this chapter and, and do these assignments. Um, but yeah, you use those for your reference though, they're there. I know the one textbook is dated. Uh, it's from the seventies, but it's still valuable information in it. Uh, and the other, the other reference uh, book is, uh, is, is pretty good. Um, I would uh, buy it if you can. If you intend to be- Okay, a thank you. I would use that. Okay. Reference. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this uh, quiz available again. Is this available? Make available. It should be available, right? No. Yeah, it is available, but uh, the deadline was yesterday. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, do it. Oh. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, if there's no other questions. Enjoy your day. You too. Thanks, Mom. Have a good one. Thank you, guys. Bye. Good day. Thank you. Bye. Stop sharing. Perfect. Adios, guys. See ya. Bye. I got to learn how to post this video now. <laughs> if anyone knows, let me know. Oops.